it's Tiffany with Thrifty Tiffany and I am back with a Sunday dinner cook with me and I'm so excited to be here with you guys because it's been a while since I did a cook with me but tonight for Sunday dinner we're making barbecue chicken breast and we are gonna be using Duke's um, Carolina Gold barbecue sauce so I'm so excited I love Carolina Gold and we're gonna be making homemade mashed potatoes homemade mac and cheese and we're gonna have sweet peas and some croissant rolls so y'all keep watching if you want to see dinner and cook with me. Um, if you are new, thank you so much for clicking on this video. I hope you stay and subscribe. And thank you so much to all my current subscribers. I love you guys so much. And I hope you guys enjoyed this Sunday dinner cook with me. And I hope everyone is having a wonderful, wonderful Memorial Day weekend. Y'all stay tuned. Okay, y'all. So for Sunday dinner, we got our chicken breast right here. I got from Kroger. And it's three split breast right here. And... I know it's only three and we have four in the house, but Kai and I will just split one and the boys can have one. They are huge, absolutely huge. Um, so that's what we're using. It was only uh, $8.76 with the Kroger card. I also have the cheeses for homemade mac and cheese. Today I'm gonna use pepper jack and medium cheddar. I'll do half of each of those. Um, so I gotta shred that up. I got some parsley for topping. I got elbows for um, the mac and cheese. Have some baked potato, oh, sorry, I say baked, Idaho potatoes to make the mashed potatoes. I got some just good old canned sweet peas. Y'all, I love sweet peas. Um, and this is the Duke's Carolina Gold Barbecue Sauce that I'm using. I love Carolina and I cannot wait to try the Duke's because we love Duke's mayo. Um, we just got olive oil, salt, pepper, I've um, got my butter here. I've got all my pans ready. So this pan's gonna have my split chicken breast in it. I'm gonna start soft, uh, searing it on the stove top and then I'm gonna put it in the oven like I always do. This is gonna have my peas in it. I have water getting ready for the potatoes and I have water here getting ready for the noodles, the pasta. So we're gonna go ahead and start the pasta, get it done and it can sit in the drainer until I actually need it. Um, same as for the potatoes. So we're well, first thing we're gonna start on the noodles, pasta. Okay y'all, so hopefully this doesn't move on you, but I'm gonna go ahead and start, um, heat up the pan in the back actually for the pasta. There we go, we got that going. And so once that brings to a boil, I'm gonna go ahead and salt it also. So once that comes to a boil, um, I'll put the pasta in, of course. Y'all got my Mother Hustler shirt on from Thread Tank. I love this shirt. Love, love, love. So put a good bout of salt in there so your pasta don't stick together. Now we got that going. And then also we're gonna wash our chicken. We're just gonna do a nice little cleansing of our chicken breasts right here. Clean them really good. Okay, y'all, so I actually changed my mind on cooking method. I'm not going to do the cast iron skillet. This is how I usually do it. I roast them on a pan that has um, a little rack on it. So I'm going to put my aluminum foil. This gets them nice and roasted, and then I can uh, brush them with the barbecue. So I think this is going to be my best bet. I love doing that. So I just have that on there. And... Um, See, I take a pop paper towel sometimes and put olive oil on the rack or you could use a spray it's up to you just put some olive oil on there and just rub this rub the little rack down all right so we rubbed our rack down and we are going to season our chicken breast all right, so I'm going to move these chicken breasts over here. So I'm going to do, nope, I'm going to do it that way. They're huge, y'all. Look how much they take up the pan. Okay. And then let me put this up real quick. Those are some big old chicken breasts right there. Let me scoot y'all closer so you can see me season. Okay, so I'm gonna show you from this angle. So I always like to start off with a little bit of olive oil, coat them good, just to moist them. And these are split breast, so the bottom is rib, like the bone. So you don't necessarily have to get the bone. All right, so you're gonna rub that baby on there. Don't be afraid to rub her. Don't be afraid to rubber. 
You gotta put some love into your food, y'all. Put some love into it. Treat those chicken breasts good, y'all. Treat them right. All right. And again, I don't wanna do any seasoning too overpowerful because I wanna taste the Duke's um, barbecue. But we're gonna start with, of course, some salt. Don't do too much, but this is a split breast, so you can do a good bit on the outside, the skin part. Um, put some salt. All right. Then we're gonna add some good old pepper, but let me wash my hands before I grab anything else with that hand. I used my other hand when I put the olive oil and um, the salt. So now let me wash the other one. Okay, so next, let me wash my hands here. Next, we're gonna add some cracked black pepper. Make this like a good old local Dollar Tree. Or anywhere you want. Barbecue, you want to have a good amount of pepper on there. pepper on there then I'm gonna add a little bit of this Memphis style barbecue on there because again it is gonna be barbecue chicken um, so we're gonna add some of that all right um, need to get some on the side right there um, let's see. I'm going to do one more drizzle of olive oil because you don't want it to dry out. You don't have to rub this one in. But you don't want it to dry out when you cook it. Put your oven on about three, 375, 400. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do about, actually I'm going to start about 390. Let it cook for a little while. Because it will take a while for these big old breasts to cook. So this is what they look like. Let me show you up close. All right, so this is what they look like up close. These things are huge. Look at these babies. Those are some big breasts. Okay, y'all, so we're just gonna put this in the oven. Those are gonna start roasting and it's gonna take a little while. You can start 375, 380, and just move up as it goes. But we're gonna start going there. Our water is coming to a bowl here and I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get the mashed potato, get the potato water for the potatoes, and we'll go ahead and peel those. All right, y'all. So we're gonna start peeling these. I've already washed them; they're still a little wet. I'm just gonna peel these potatoes so we can put them in the water. I hope everyone is doing well. It's been a while since I did a cook with me. I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna cook a good Sunday dinner and film it. What, are, what are all are y'all doing for Memorial Day? We don't really have any plans. I think I'm gonna make some steak and baked potatoes and a little salad. So I might film that. But um, I'm just cutting them in good sized pieces and put them in um, the water over here. Um, hope y'all liked some of my new videos that I put the Dollar Tree closet, my bathroom organization, and I did. I posted a new haul. Um, I was so excited about those dried flowers in that haul. Um, those are so pretty and to be for a dollar, oh my goodness, I couldn't believe it. Y'all, I love me some mashed potatoes. Love me some mashed potatoes. Love barbecue chicken. Um, let's see. 
Also, if y'all like my cooking on YouTube, definitely check me out on Instagram. I have a, um, a food page. It's called Taste of Tiffany. It's taste.of.tiffany. And it ha I'll have, I have pictures of my food and um, that I always cook. So, I, of course, I'm going to have this picture on there. I'm excited for this. And the croissant rolls are the Eli's that I get from um, Dollar Tree. Y'all, those are so good with butter on them. Mmm, so good. They are amazing. I cannot believe I finally got my bathroom done. I was so excited to finally get it cleaned and organized, y'all. Y'all, that's like a weight lifted off of me. That's true. When you finally get something that's cluttered clean, it makes you feel so much better. It's like a stress reliever. Took me months to get to, to finally get to it. So I'm just peeling these potatoes. I'll end up having to go back to the store to get the potatoes for tomorrow for a baked potato because these were kind of small. Um... Hope everyone's healthy and doing well and spending time with their family for Memorial Day. We have our little pool. I might fill it up with water tomorrow. It's been raining here in Atlanta. Um, on and off, but it's gorgeous outside. It's pretty, it's sunny, but um, it's raining. And then it stops and it's so hot. It gets so humid. There's steam coming off the streets. Y'all, it gets hot in Georgia. Oops, Kaya and I, um, the boys didn't want to go. Kaya hates being in the house. <laughs> so quarantine's been hard for her, but um, she likes to ride through Atlanta, like down Peachtree Street. So we did that today um, just to get out the house and then went to Kroger and picked up these chicken breasts. I wanted chicken legs. But I wanted to make some barbecue chicken legs, but I think everybody had the same idea for a Memorial Day. Everybody wanted chicken legs, and they got to them before me. So I said, you know what, we're going to do split breast, because I love some good old chicken breast, but it's not as flavorful as, um, as much as you try to make chicken breast flavorful. It will get it, but one's that big, sometimes the seasoning can't penetrate down into the big breast. So dark meat is really, really good for that. Dark meat, you can season really well. Like even thighs. Thighs is really good to make barbecue chicken or um, the legs. And I wanted the legs so bad. You can roast, oh my gosh, I'll have to show you. I roast chicken legs and that's what I was planning on doing today. I roast them and they turn out so good. So let me show you guys what I got going on over here. Let me lift you up a little bit. But I just added all the potatoes into this pot so it's boiling this water has come to a boil so we're gonna add our elbows to it you can get these at dollar tree honey and i like to use the whole container we love mac and cheese in this house pour all of them in there and drop one like you gotta do um also i could go ahead and open that trash open the peas and get them in there you don't really want to do peas early because they're canned um and honestly i like fresh peas um uh what do you call them frozen but y'all i grew up on canned peas and a girl just has to have canned food sometimes i love canned peas i love them now i love canned green beans also but I love, oh my goodness, what is going on with my thing? It's sticky. I love um, some fresh green beans. I love some good old fresh green beans. But peas, look at those peas. But my favorite are like, what is that brand? It has like a silver thing and they have, I like small peas, like the mini peas. And um, what is it called? I forgot the name of it. It's more expensive than the store brand, but they're little peas and they're really, really good. I love that brand. I don't forgot the name of it, but um, yeah. And all I put in my peas is salt, pepper, and butter. That's it. Put about a tablespoon of butter in there. And I'm not gonna start cooking those yet because you don't want them like soggy, soggy. Add a little bit of pepper.
or a lot of pepper <laughs> and a little bit of salt. It already comes with some salt, so don't put too much. And the butter has salt in it. All right. Okay, y'all, so we got our potatoes sitting in here, and they are going to be coming to a boil. Got our pasta right there cooking, and this is what our peas look like right there. Got to mix it up. They're just sitting. We're not cooking that yet. Just got them ready. Okay, y'all, so we're going to start shredding half of each of these um, into this plate for our mac and cheese. Now, we did just put our chicken breast in, so I'm just getting basically getting everything ready for the next step because that chicken breast is going to take a little while. So, um, the noodles, you can go ahead and pre-cook your noodles for homemade mac and cheese um, and just have them in the drainer until it's time. Don't make your sauce yet, but just pre-do the noodles. You can go ahead and Go ahead and pre-cook the potatoes. Have them ready before you start. Don't mash them or nothing. Just pre-cook them. Um, so those things could be ready. You can put your peas in your pan. Just don't um, turn it on yet. And just have everything ready because those chicken breasts are going to take a little bit. Now, so would anytime you roast a chicken like that or a chicken on the bone, any type of chicken on the bone is going to take a while. So just you know you know you can put that in there in advance because it's about what time is it i don't i don't even know it's not even dinner time yet i'm definitely cooking early for one to get it up to you guys in time by this evening because my sunday dinners always kind of come up late i might end up doing a little more than half of this uh cheddar and then just half of the pepper jack um i think that's what i usually do so I'm going to go ahead and get started with this. Um, but yeah, get your meat in there. Just start prepping everything else. You can go sit in the couch while your meat's cooking. Watch some TV or whatever you want to do. Um, and then when it's time to get the other stuff started, um, everything will be ready. So I'm going to have everything prepared but the sauce. I'll have the cheese. And I, you don't want to do the sauce ahead of time, not for the mac and cheese. You want to do it right before you're about to put it in the oven. And you don't want to go ahead and make up the mac and cheese, have the noodles, the sauce, put it in the pot, uh, pan, um, because all the sauce will melt, go to the bottom, so, of your casserole dish, basically. Let's go ahead and get this shredded. And I love to use block cheese instead of shredded cheese um, and just shred it yourself. Just do the extra step because this melts so much better when you um, use the block cheese for mac and cheese. Same with when I do Alfredo and I use the Parmesan block. Do that. Do the block instead of the shred, shredded ones, pre-shredded ones. My noodles are already almost done. Smush that down in there. Um, hold on, let me wipe my hands. I gotta stir the noodles. You don't want no soggy noodles. You want, always want your noodles al dente, so um, so they'll taste good. Let me get my drainer. I get my drainer ready because it is almost ready to come out. The noodles cook so fast. And again, don't let them be soggy. They're not, macaroni and cheese is so nasty if it's soggy. You want your noodles to hold up when you bake them. Sorry for that loud noise. I am washing the thing. Let me cut y'all off for a second. Okay, y'all, so these are already ready. That was so quick. Um, and you don't want to cook them again so i'm gonna pour them in the drainer okay y'all so i just poured in this the noodles into the drainer and it's gonna rest in there until we actually need it because again i'm pre-cooking it and getting everything ready right now all right y'all so i got both cheeses shredded i did a whole block of what is this eight ounce of medium cheddar you could do sharp cheddar you could do mild cheddar i did medium and i did half of the pepper jack i don't think i'll need the other half right now but this is what it looks like so far um so i went ahead and got that shredded that is done for us so that step's done the pasta is waiting 
the peas are chilling. Now we're just waiting on the potatoes and the chicken are roasting really nicely. I have the chicken on 375 now. Um, so it's on 375 and I'll eventually move it up 390, uh, 385, 390, and then 400. So right now we're relaxing. Y'all, we stopped at the gas station and this stuff is so good. This Minute Maid watermelon punch, yum E, And I grabbed one, it's so good. Like, so good. Mm-mm-mm. Mm. This is a good drink. If you had a little bit of alcohol or something like that to add to it to make a mixed drink, that would be good. But this, by itself, is good. But I'm just saying, if you have, like, some type of, what would be good with it? Um, maybe a Grey Goose or Patron. No, nah, Patron wouldn't. That's a tequila. Maybe Grey Goose would be good with this. Um, you know, if you're just feeling a little feisty for the evening, grab you a little drinky. But I also have, um, what is it, that? That Aldi drink that's watermelon. It, this is a uh, wine though. Haven't opened this, I'm saving this one. Alrighty, so we're just gonna wait. Okay, y'all, so our potatoes are getting there. We're about to check on our chicken because it's been roasting for a while now. All right, let's look at those. They are a beauty. Now, we want to add a little bit more olive oil so it doesn't dry out. Okay, and we're still not going to add the barbecue yet because it's not time. You don't want to add the barbecue too early or it will burn. So now it's for the olive oil. This is to keep it moist in there. All right. Look at those beauties. Woo! They're pretty. All right, back in the oven. Okay, y'all, so the potatoes are done. We are going to drain them. And that pot is going to be hot. That pot is going to be hot. So I'm going to go over here and drain them real quick. But they are done. Okay, y'all, so we're gonna start on mashed potatoes. We got butter, and it's salted butter, uh, and cream cheese. And I'll show you the potatoes. This is the potatoes, they just got done. And while they're hot, go ahead and add your stuff. I'm gonna add black pepper, black pepper here. A little bit of salt because the uh, the um, butter has salt in it also. So a little bit of salt. You salted the water, but I just drained it. So a little bit of salt. Then some butter. Let's see, how many do we have? Let's see, what about one, two, about how many tablespoons? One, two, three, four tablespoons. We'll start with that. And then we're gonna open up our cream cheese. I like our potatoes creamy. You can also add sour cream. Um, I'm gonna start with uh, just the cream cheese and we'll probably use half of this. Maybe add more, sometimes I add more depending on, depending on how creamy it gets. Let me grab some milk. And the best is whole milk. I use the Dollar Tree milk. Add some whole milk into it. Where is my potato smasher? Where's my potato smasher? Take it back old school. And y'all don't use a mixer, like a beater, because it'll make your potato, it will make your potatoes waxy. So don't do that. Definitely use a um, smasher. You gotta be careful in these pans because you're not supposed to use this. I'm gonna try smashing it. You're not supposed to use metal in these type of pans. Make sure you do a good mash and then you taste it and then see what you need. I've used mayo, a little squirt of mayo in, in potatoes before. I've used sour cream and I might actually add a little bit of sour cream. I'm gonna taste it first. Let me show this you the close. start of it. The butter's melting right there. Just want to keep smashing it. You can leave some chunks in there, but 
Ooh, it is looking good, y'all. All right, y'all, we're about to pull out the chicken again so we can start adding the Carolina barbecue. This baby is looking beautiful. Look at her, she is a beauty. Woo, she's thick and she is a beauty. So excited. I'm so excited. Woo. Okay, now we're gonna take our Carolina barbecue, Carolina gold. Got our little brush here. I'm gonna start with squirting it off on it. Oh, that's a beauty. Don't be stingy. Bathe them babies. Bathe them babies in that barbecue. All right, now we're gonna take this, and that's why I have aluminum foil in my pan right there. Look at that beauty right there. Ooh. She is a beauty. Y'all, this is what life's about right here. Just some good old comfort food. This is life. Yes, ma'am. Oh, yes. Bathe her really good. You can get under her little rib right there. Bathe her. Oh, look at those. And then we're going to put her back in for a little bit. So she can finish her cooking. Look at that. All right, we're gonna put her back in. Okay, y'all, we're gonna go ahead and turn the peas on right there in the back. Turn those babies on back there. Get those going. The mashed potatoes are nice and together. They're together. I made a mess right here. Oops, sorry about that. Oh my gosh, I keep hitting the stand. Um. I gotta put this in there. The lid. Okay, y'all, so there are the mashed potatoes. They are done, they have some chunks in them, and whoo, I love homemade mashed potatoes. Okay, y'all, so we're gonna turn on uh, this pot, and we're gonna start making the roux to make the cheese sauce for the mac and cheese. Got all my stuff, got our cheese sitting here, and we'll need uh, about uh, two tablespoons of butter with two tablespoons of flour. That's how you make your roux. So I got the two tablespoons in there. And then I need to grab, let me move you guys closer. There we go, that's a little better. You can see it better. So we got the two tablespoons of butter in there. Oh, let me move further out right there. And then we're gonna put two tablespoons of flour. All righty. And then you're gonna mix that up to get the, um, or to make a paste and to get the flour taste out of it. And you're gonna whisk it, whisk her up. You need to go ahead and get the milk all out also so i'm about to grab the milk while that's while that's doing its thing bella what are you doing what are you doing bella actually i might use the milk in here sorry you guys see guys see my oh is the milk in here no, i don't think it is i used it so Okay, letting it cook out the flour. And again, while we make this, sorry if this is like lopsided, it's the best way I can get it so you can see. Um, when you make any sauce, I know I've said this before, but you want to slowly add in, a, if it's cold, you want to slowly add it to what's warm or it's gonna clump up. And that's gonna be nasty if you have clumped up mac and cheese. It will not be good. It'll have clumps of flour. So let the flour cook out of this. And then we're gonna start slowly adding the milk. That is the key. 
It's actually really simple, but you just have to, a lot of people are like, it's so hard to make, you know, a Alfredo or a cheese sauce. It's because you have to slowly add it. Even though Alfredo, you don't use um, flour, but for mac and cheese, you let that kind of cook down really good. Also at this stage, let me go ahead and do it. Oh man, my fan cut on. We need to go ahead and add some black pepper and a little bit of salt at this stage. Sorry, a little bit of salt. Then we're gonna start adding our milk slowly. I'm talking about drizzle at a time. See how it's gonna thicken up? Look at this. All right, let me cut down my chicken because I don't want it to burn. This is when it gets hectic in the kitchen. We'll slowly add it. It's gonna clump on you at first. You're gonna be like, oh my gosh. But it's gonna clump. See, if you had poured it all in at one time, it would have been these clumps inside the milk. So just a little bit at a time because you're adding something really cold to something really hot. So keep going with it, little bit at a time. It's gonna form a paste. Oop. Then, put my peas down some, oops. And just let it mix in. See, it's gonna form a Beautiful paste for you. Beautiful paste. Look at her. She is a beauty, honey. She is a beauty. And don't leave her alone. Stay by her. She needs your support. Don't leave her. I know 90% of people in this world are used to leaving, but don't leave her. <laughs> you got to stay with her. You got to sit here and babysit her and do what you got to do. Make sure she t turns out a good product, you know? I don't even know what I'm saying at this point, y'all. I'm just talking. Oh, my goodness. I almost flew you around town. Look at her. I'm talking about she is a beauty. So, I don't have exact measurements, guys, because I'm Southern. So we're just gonna add the cheese sauce. You just kind of think, I have a whole container of pasta over here. How much sauce do you want? You don't want it swimming, you want it soaking. You want the cheese to soak, the mac and cheese, the noodles to soak in the cheese, you don't want it swimming. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so we're gonna get her ready. She is getting there. because then we're gonna have to add the cheese. So she's at the point now you can add a good bit because she didn't clump up, she's all thick. And there we go. Now we're gonna let her start to boil a little bit. Might add, let me see, inside my pot I have, it tells me how many cups, so let's see. I'll have to see how many cups I have. I'm gonna do a little bit more. There we go. and let that cook up. All right, still working on this cheese sauce. So now that it's gonna come to a boil, you don't wanna turn up too high and you don't wanna scald the bottom. So you have to make sure you're whisking. You can let it sit for a minute, but do not leave it on here alone. Please, It'll, you'll scald and burn the bottom. Burnt milk does not smell nor taste good. So, Telling you, don't leave her. She's one you don't want to leave. She's wife. You know, she's wife material. <laughs> Y'all, I am too crazy right now. Okay, so I'll be back. Okay, so I just sprayed the pan with some of this. You can do butter if you want, but um, I just did this to be quick. So that is it. I have my pasta waiting here. Mixing my thick sauce. Again, don't leave her too long. Don't leave her too long. She's thickening up really nicely, and then we're going to start adding cheese. 
So once we start adding the cheese, we're gonna turn it down a little bit. Because we really want the cheese to melt, not necessarily separate, because some cheeses separate, so. Okay, so she's really thick. Now we're gonna turn her down just a little bit and we're gonna add our cheeses. Leave a little bit of the cheddar out to sprinkle on the top. So first we'll add the pepper jack, that makes it really creamy and have a little bit of spice. You can use Monterey Jack or, yeah, Monterey Jack and cheddar are my normal go-to, but I wanted to add some pepper jack for a spice today. So normally, I've showed it before on a video, use Monterey Jack, it's really good. That one I wanna leave for the top right there. Alrighty, so we're gonna mix this up for a little bit for it to become a cheese sauce. All right, okay, we're gonna taste the cheese sauce here. Oh my gosh. Mmm. That pepper jack does something to mac and cheese. Oh yes. Okay, and sometimes I'm sorry if this fan is so loud, but am I, it automatically cuts on if I'm got a lot going on. Um, sometimes I do add an egg, and some people ask me why. Sometimes you, you just add an egg, sometimes you don't, just depending on how you want your mac and cheese to turn out. Today I'm not adding an egg. But let me put this pan over here. Um, we're gonna add the cheese sauce into here, because she is a beauty at this point. Actually, should I thicken her up a little bit more? Hmm, yeah, I might, I might thicken her up just a little bit more and then we'll add her together. She's thick, but I wanna add a, just a little bit more. Now our barbecue chicken is done. Look how they came out. Yes, ma'am. I can't wait to plate up and show you guys. Okay, she's thickened up a bit. Now we're gonna add her to the mac and cheese. Also, when you drain your mac and cheese, don't rinse it because you want the starch on there to add to the cheese. So I don't rinse mine. We're gonna add it, turn that off, add it to here. Whoo, yes ma'am. You wanna add all that goodness in there. All right, clean that baby out. Mix her up. And this is the time that you would add an egg if you were going to. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Honestly, it just depends. Honestly, it just depends on how I'm feeling. Sometimes you don't notice a difference, sometimes you do. I guess it depends on how, um, what do you call it? How thin your cheese might be, you can add an egg. Um, chop up these. All right. Now we're gonna add her into the pan that we greased. And then pop her in the oven. Need my spatula, uh, my, yeah, my spatula to get all of this out. All right, now we're gonna add our cheddar. You always wanna save some to top it. That's what makes it so pretty. Cheesy at the top. All right, so we added the cheese and now we're gonna stick her in the oven. I don't know, for around, she just got to melt and heat up for around 20 minutes. Okay, y'all, so I just got out the croissants. They just go in the oven, 350. You don't even have to leave them in there long at all and then just top it with some butter because they're already cooked. You just warm them up. But they are just done. pulled out the mac and cheese. Um, it looks so amazing and I can't wait to dive in it. Next, I'm going to plate up our dish. Here is the barbecue chicken. I added some parsley to top it off once it got done. And our mashed potatoes are done right there. 
So we're gonna plate up, oh, and our peas, and now we're gonna plate up. So everybody's fixing their Sunday dinner plate here. We had to cut that chicken, y'all, it's huge. Cayman's coming down, Cayman, come on. Okay, y'all, so this is the Finnish Sunday dinner, and I'm so hungry. Thank you guys so much for watching. I love you guys. Hope y'all have a wonderful Sunday evening. Bye everyone.